Hello everyone, uh, basically this is going to be a pretty quick video. Um, I've received a lot of messages, um, a lot of comments on my videos and also people messaging me on Facebook who have seemed to have found me on there. Um, a lot of people asking me about um, my whole setup for recording videos, how I make my reviews um, and which equipment I use. So this video is going to be a little quick tutorial about all the equipment that I use and also interestingly I've got a special way that I record my gameplay footage which I want to talk to you about because I, as far, well, as far as I've seen on YouTube, nobody else is using the same method as I am. Um, and I find that my method is the best. I think it's the cheapest way to do it. I think you get the best results and it's also the most flexible. Now, firstly, I'll talk you through the different equipment that I use and then uh, we'll go into how I use it all to make my videos. So I get asked, what camera do you use and which lenses? Uh, the camera that I use, the one that I'm recording on now, is a Canon 5D Mark II. Um, the lens that I use for this one, um, I've got different lenses, but for these particular videos I use the 50mm f1.4. I'd love the 1.2 but it's too expensive and I found that the results with the 1.8 were not quite as good as this one. So even though this is an expensive, um, you know, there are cheaper alternatives around. If you're just starting out I'd recommend maybe buying a you know, flip uh, video. They're really cheap, especially now they don't make them anymore. Um, there's also Toshiba, I think do one called the Camillo, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's the name, you can get those for about 30, 40 quid, so they're really cheap. Um, alternatively, you can just use the webcam, um, if you've got HD one it especially helps on your Mac or your PC. Um, alternatively, as a last resort, I'd say you could just get your iPhone out, um, or any other phone that you may have that again has got a HD camera on it, and you'll find that you'll get good enough results to be able to use on this one, but if you're really sort of wanting to go for the next level, then you know, invest some money in it and uh, I think the results really help and you know, speak for themselves. Um, in terms of microphones, what microphones do I use? Um, I've got quite a deep voice, so um, what I've always found is if I use cheaper microphones, especially my voice sounds sort of, well, too deep on that. Um, the two microphones I use, the first one is the Rode VideoMic Pro, which is the one that I'm talking into now, which I've got connected directly to the camera. When you hear me talking, doing my vo voiceovers in, uh, in my reviews, then uh, the microphone that I use for that is a Blue Microphone Yeti. Um, this is one of the few THX certified microphones on the market. Um, it's a USB one. Um, it's around about £100, so I think in America you'd probably be able to get it for about $100 to $120. Um, it's a really good microphone. Um, sound clarity is excellent. Um, I made a comparison video one day just so you can see the differences between the different microphones that I have. Um, alternative, you know, I'd suggest uh, microphones like the Rode Video Mic. Um, any one of those are good, but if you're wanting to go to the next level again, I would probably say to go for the Rode NTG2, um, a really good XLR microphone. Um, again, it depends which camera setup you've got and whether you've got the connectors to attach it to your computer, um, but I've always found that to be an excellent shotgun microphone. Now, from what I've seen, there's four main key ways that people record gameplay footage to upload to YouTube, so I'm going to talk you through them first and then explain to them uh, why I don't use these particular methods. So the very first one, which is my number one hated method, is the camera pointed at the screen method. Um, I appreciate that not everyone can afford to invest in capture equipment, but what I've always found is that uh, pointing a camera at the screen to record your gameplay footage is terrible. You'll never get the quite right sound on there, and also the picture's never gonna look as good. Um, this has not really been as popular as it used to be, but if you look at some early YouTube videos, then. This was quite a popular method, but I never liked it and I never resorted to it myself because of that. The second method, um, quite a lot of people have decided to do, um, which is use a Hapage HD PVR. Now with these, what I found is if you're gonna be recording footage from newer modern consoles like Xbox 360, uh, PlayStation 3 and so on, these are the best ones you can get. They've also just released, released a HD model which uses HDMI. Now even though the older HD PVRs by Hapage use um, the different connectors, please do not use these if you're going to be recording retro game footage. The problem that you have is that the decoder inside the box can't handle them. Um, you get different crazy types of signal, especially from uh, Sega Genesis. Um, you'll never get the picture right, you'll never get the sound right. And even though it will let you record footage, you'll find that most of it is quite unusable. Um, so my advice is if you're using a modern console, buy one of these Hapage devices, they are fantastic. Um, if you look at any of my PlayStation 3 footage for example, or my Rayman Origins review, that's what I recorded it on, and um, does a fantastic job. 
If you try and use these on retro consoles, it's not going to work and there are cheaper options available which is what I'll talk to you about later. The next one um, is another one of my pet peeves. Uh, this is people that use emulators. Uh, the problem with emulators, in, in my opinion, is if you're going to be you know, doing reviews, if you're going to be doing collect, uh, collection videos, for example, as well, and you are a collector, you're going to want the original hardware, the original controls, the original game. You're going to want it to look and feel exactly how it was when you originally played these retro games. The problem is if you use an emulator on your PC or on your Mac is you're generally going to have a controller that's going to be you know, like an Xbox controller for example and I think this takes away the feel of the game but also a lot of these emulators have got graphical enhancers in them which will improve the quality of the sound and also HD texture packs which will make the games look better so essentially you may be playing the same game but what you'll actually find is that it, the complete feel of it just isn't there anymore it's diff more difficult to connect with the game when you're playing it Especially when you're doing reviews, this can be you know, a big problem because you know, one of the things that I like is seeing how I remember games looking and then going back and playing them and then realising it wasn't quite as good as they used to be. And the fourth and final way, uh, which I think is quite common for people to record their gameplay footage, is using a DVD recorder. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, you buy a DVD recorder, plug your console into it, connect it to your TV. So you've got all the original hardware, which is fantastic, I totally agree with it. Um, the problem that you've got with that is you don't have to put the DVDs in, start recording. So you play all your game, it's recording to the DVD. Um, again, the investment for a DVD recorder depends on which country you're from, but generally they're anything around sort of 100 to 150 pounds, uh, so a couple hundred dollars. And then you've obviously got to keep buying the discs. Um, so each time you burn a disc with your gameplay footage, um, you have to have a blank DVD. What you then have to do is go to your computer, put the DVD in, rip the footage off, which again is going to reduce the quality. Um, it doesn't always, but I've always found with my experiences it used to. And I actually recorded this way um, with the previous videos uh, when I first started myself. And I always found it was very, very time consuming because uh, once you play the footage, you've got the DVD, you put it in your computer, you have to rip all the footage off before you can start editing it. So it can become quite difficult. And you've also got lots of setup as well, We're having to plug the DVD recorder in, your console in, and just getting everything up, I found it to be too, too time consuming. Um, a lot of people like myself have got busy lives these days, so trying to find time to do all of this can be quite difficult. So I did tell you at the start that I've got a bit of a secret way that I've not seen anybody else talk about, um, which I'm now gonna let you know more about, and I'll hopefully give you a little bit of a tutorial on the Mac, because what I found is a lot of people now these days are using Macs, which is great, I love them myself. Um, I edit all of my videos using Final Cut Pro, uh, so you know I'm a Mac-based person. But a lot of people struggle to find capturing devices which are specific for Mac. So my video is not only going to save you money, it's going to save you time, and it will give you the best results, which are the most flexible. Okay, so we're now back again. Um, so I'm going to let you know and show you exactly how I record and all the great features you can do. This is for a Mac-based system. If you are using a PC, then there are other videos, there's other people showing you this, but I'm showing you specifically how to record fantastic gameplay footage on a Mac. So the very first thing that you'll need is the original console, the original hardware and the original games and so on. Um, I'm big on this, uh, I think it's the only way they should record, so obviously lots of you will be collectors, so you will already have most of these pieces lying around. Now in terms of the capture card that I use, on my Mac I actually use a Dazzle. Now, a lot of you will have already had have these for a, a PC-based system. Now, Dazzle does actually sell a Mac-based version, but the price of it is absolutely extortionate. Um, to be honest, this one's actually a PC one. However, what you'll find is that I've got a workaround, so you can actually use it directly with your Mac without any problems. The reason why they charge so much for the Mac one is one of those general things whereby anything on, on a Mac costs more than it does on a PC, but they also include special software with it. Now what i found is I actually bought this PC Dazzle capture card for, I think it was about £15, um, so you can work that out for wherever in the world you are. I actually use the PC one and just plug it straight using USB into the back of my Mac in one of the USB slots. For the benefits of those that are watching, I'm uh, actually using a 27 inch iMac, I've got 8 gig of RAM, quad core processor um, and so on, so it just gives you an idea of what I'm using, but this will work for any type of Mac, whether you've got a MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, Retina, and so on. You can use this method the whole way. So once you've plugged your uh, Dazzle capture card into your PC, you, what you'll notice is that there are four slots. The green light will light up to let you know it's connected. 
You don't need to install any software at this point. This is one of the reasons why my method works the best is because I'm bypassing all of the software that comes with it and using my own software that I'm gonna tell you about and this is how you will get the best results. So on this side, you'll see the green light. Uh, this is lit up, obviously letting you know that the power's on. You've then got the left and right audio, the white and red ones just there. You've also got the S video, which I'll talk about in a moment. And you've also got the yellow video cable. Now, depending on which cables you've got, uh, there are different ways to connect this, okay? Now, with me, I record my Nintendo 64 videos uh, using an S video cable. So what you need to do is take the S video cable from your, directly from your Nintendo 64 and plug it into the S video slot. Okay. Now, if you've got any other video cables, for example, if you're recording using Genesis, uh, NES, Super Nintendo, and so on, you'll just plug in the video cable. Now, you, what you need to remember is leave the audio cable separate. You just want to plug in the video cable. Okay. Now, once you've got that video cable in, you need to go to your Mac, either to the back or to the side of it, and this is where you're going to do a little bit of a trick to uh, get everything working. So now that you've got your S video cable, plugged into your Dazzle and the Dazzle still plugged into the Mac, you'll be left with the two audio cables which I talked about a moment ago. Now what you're going to need here is a very, very cheap piece of equipment, which is simply an AV splitter, which is just like that. These cost probably a pound, one dollar. You know, they're not very expensive, they're really easy to find. Most hardware stores, Amazon, eBay, they'll all do them. Okay, now what you need to do is just take the red and the white cables and just simply connect these up. Okay, so video cable, again just to recap, video cable goes into the capture card, audio goes into the splitter. Now what you need to do is with this splitter cable, you need to plug this into the line in. What I'm gonna do now is just show you a quick picture of the line in, how to locate it and what it looks like. That's where you need to plug this cable in. Video into Dazzle, audio directly into your Mac, okay? This is gonna be able to get you the best results and like I said, it will make sure that you can actually use a PC-based Dazzle card on the Mac without having to pay all that money to get a special dedicated Mac version. Okay, now you've got your retro console connected to your capture card and to your Mac. Okay, so what's next? You're gonna need some software. Now in order to do this, there's two pieces of software that you need. The first one costs $15. Now like I said, you can try and get away with using this for free. Um, if you follow some guides, there are ways how you can, you know, sort of hack this or crack it, things like that. My advice would be don't use those because they don't work. Or if they do work, what you'll find is you have to turn off your Wi-Fi every single time you turn on your capture device, which is, you know, for the sake of $15, just pay the $15, keep it all connected, and then that way, you know, you won't have any hassle. That program is called Video Glide Capture. You can download it from their website. I'll put a link in the description below. And this is where you go to download it. So what we'll now do is just go onto the actual screen itself and I'll show you this program and give you an overview. So the first thing that you need to do is to open up Video Glide Capture. After you've downloaded it and installed it, just click to open it. Now you'll see this greenish box open. Don't worry about that because you need to put in the settings first. So go to the top, go to record, and then click on video settings. Now if you look at adjustments, the main one that you may need to adjust will be the black level. Um, just increase that a little bit just to give yourself a truer black in your recordings. Under compression, you can leave that as it is. Now, where it's got source, you need to select either composite, if you're using composite cable, or S-Video. This is just what you've got plugged into your Dazzle card. I'm using S-Video. USB bandwidth 100%, and select auto detect in the input just to make sure that everything's okay, and then go in and look at sound settings. Now under sound settings, sample, it will, by default it will be 44.100, just change that to 48, stereo and 16 bit. And under source, this is where you need to make sure you go to select line in, because if you don't, then you won't hear any sound because we've plugged it into the line in on the Mac itself. Here you choose your resolution, N64 is 640 by 480. You can also do custom sizes, or if you've got a different console that records at a different resolution. Now, if you just go to flick your console on, what you should find is that the picture will pop up on screen. Okay, now this is actually real time. There's no delay on this. So if you actually play the game on this screen, you can do that whilst you're recording. 
Now it may look a little bit slow here, it's just because I'm recording my desktop, this is perfectly in real time. Just press record, type in the file name, and select where you'd like to save it, and then press start. And you can actually carry on playing the game on the original hardware with original controls, with no delay whatsoever, which is a problem that a lot of capture devices have. And then whenever you finish recording, you just click in the box, it tells you recording's been saved, and then you can go onto your desktop and you, or wherever you saved the file and see it there. So now just exit Video Glide Capture. Okay, so now that you've recorded your footage, you'll notice that it's in four, most likely in 4x3 resolution. And if you try and upload this to YouTube, you will get the square box view, or you have to try and stretch it out using the um, you know, built-in software in YouTube, which doesn't do the best job. What I want to show you now is for those of you that do want to go the next step and make your videos HD, whether it's 1080, 720 and so on, I'm going to show you how you can make the videos that you've just captured completely perfect, compatible for YouTube, and also it will give you the best results. Now in order to do this you need to download another piece of software, but the good news is this one is free, and this one is called MPEG Stream Clip. What this allows you to do is it allows you to insert video files, now you can completely change them, you can alter their resolution, their frame rate, uh, the quality from the original footage you've just recorded into whatever format you want it to be in. So for example with my videos, I've recorded it in the native resolution from the, the Nintendo 64 and then what this software allows me to do is reconvert all the videos into 30 frames a second which is what you need to use for YouTube because YouTube does play at 30 frames a second and also de de it also de-interlaces all of the uh, video footage as well and basically it makes it much easier to edit, makes it exactly compatible for YouTube and again it gives you more flexibility because you can upload HD videos in full screen rather than having a HD video where you're going to have the black bars um, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is just give you a little bit of an overview of how you can do this in the software and then we'll come back for a final wrap up. So once you've downloaded and installed MPEG Stream Clip, just open it up and you'll see a box that looks like this. So what you need to do now is just go down and drag and drop the file that you've just recorded and just drop it inside. Okay, and you'll see the first uh, frame of your video there. You can sometimes preview in 16x9 there, but you don't need to change anything there. Now you go to File, and then you want to Export to QuickTime. Okay, now this screen will look complicated, but don't worry. So you need to click Compression, and what I'd recommend is that you select H.264. It's right at the top. Next, you need to go down to quality, I say 55. Frame rate you want 30, YouTube plays in only in 30, so make sure you do it in 30. Then you want to select to deinterlace the video. And then on the left hand side, you need to choose what resolution you'd now like the video file to be in. I'm gonna do this one in 720, just so it speeds things up, and then you click make video. It will then ask you to choose the name of the file, and then you need to Type in that file name, which I'm just doing off camera now, and then choose where you want to save it, and then just click start. On the left hand side, it will bring up the preview video as it renders the new version, but on the right hand side, it will just give you a progress bar just to let you know how long's left. Okay, now going back to the quality, if you select 55, you can't really notice the difference between 55% and 100, going back to the previous screen that we were on. So only unless you're using a HD console would you select 100 for the quality. Okay, now this is just finishing off the render. So you can see it's a very quick program. So now if you just go along X MPEG stream clip because your file is now complete. So I'm just going to put both of these files side by side and open them up. So you can see the original one, which I'm just going to open now. So you can see this is in the 4x3 screen size. And the one which we've just made is a new HD version, completely scaled to size, and it plays perfectly. So that's a side by side, four by three, and 16 by nine. Okay, so hopefully with my videos, they've now answered all the questions that you have about my equipment, uh, about how I record, and I've also hopefully given you lots of great ideas for how you can improve the quality of your video capture and get the best results. I think being part of the YouTube gaming community is all about sharing ideas to help the whole uh, movement sort of you know, progress, look better, and again, open up to more people. Uh, I think there's maybe a lot of people that are unsure about what equipment they need and so on. 
So even though I've used high-end equipment for mine, such as my camera, lenses and microphones, uh, I've given you some tips for how you can produce yourself uh, great quality videos cheaper and also to save yourself a lot of time as well. Some of the old, more fashioned uh, ways of capturing video are becoming redundant, so hopefully with this way it will show you how to speed things up and again you can enjoy more time gaming and editing your videos rather than having to worry about converting files, ripping from DVDs and still having fantastic quality. If you do have any other further questions, just let me know in the comments below. You can also message me directly here on YouTube and I always generally try to reply to all comments within a day or two. So thank you for watching and until next time, see you then.